So he says, uh, um, verse 11, watch this. Remember at the garden, remember at the garden where when God put Adam out of the garden, what did he have to do? Adam was naked, right? Yeah. So he had to clothe him. Right? Listen what, you know, here John is preaching the gospel and in and, and verse 9 it says, And now also the axe head is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree therefore which bringeth forth not fruit is hewn down and thrown into the fire. Why is he talking about fruit? Because this is what the reason was. Adam and Eve ate the fruit and it was put out this very place. Right? right? Now watch the next one. And the people asked him saying, What shall we do then? And look, well, check this out. He says, He answered and said unto them, He that hath two skins, let him give one skin away. Because this is the place of skins. He who has two coats, let him give someone a coat. And he says, Watch this. Let him, uh, and let him impart to him that he that has none. And he that hath meat, let him do likewise. This is where God skint the lamb and fed Adam and Eve. I mean, is this crazy? Yes. This is like, wow! Wow, crazy! But it ain't got crazy yet! It hasn't gotten crazy yet! This is the water gate they're at. The water gate, the entrance into the, you know, into the promised land. Watch this. And he says, then came also the publicans, right, the tax collectors, to be baptized. And he said unto them, Master, what shall we do? I'm going to tie this in in a minute. Watch this. And he said unto them, exact no more than that which is to be appointed to you. Right? Because if you, man, I can't tie it in yet. I got to wait. I don't want to give it away. Watch this. And the soldiers likewise demanded him, saying, and what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither, neither accuse any falsely. The, fa the accuser of the brethren, Satan. This is his place. The serpent, remember? He says, uh, And be content with your wages, what you got. And as the people were in expectation, and all the men mused in their hearts of John, whether he was the Christ or not, now they want to know, if he's the Christ. But watch this. Now, if he's the Christ, what is Christ going to do? He's going to bring the mountains down. He's going to raise up the valleys. He's going to make the crooked path straight. And he's going to make the rough places smooth. That's what they're asking him. Are you that guy? That's what the Pharisees and Sadducees come out there for the Day of Atonement for. It was a Day of Atonement wanting to know, John, are you that one? I, no, it's not me. It is not me who's going to do that. Right? But, oh, my Lord, watch this next. And as the people were in expectation, because they knew that's where the Messiah was going to come in, because it was prophesied that he would come in through the east gate. And all men musing their hearts, if he was uh, the Christ and I, John answered, saying unto them, All and in I indeed baptize you with water, right? But one mightier than I, who's, who, who cometh... Wait, he says, John answered, saying unto them, All, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mighty and, mightier than I, the latcheth of whose shoes I'm not even worthy to take off. Son, he said, I'm not worthy to remove the curse. Who? Oh, what did you say? Hallelujah. The curse. He's talking about shoes. This is where God put the shoes on them because of the curse. He said, look, I can't remove the curse. There's one that's coming that's greater than I. It's him who's I'm not even worthy to unlace his shoes. Why is he wearing shoes? Because he had to walk. He had to take upon himself the curse. Amen. <laughs> I can't remove them shoes because they was asking him, John, what shall we do? Are you the Christ? Are you the Savior? And he's saying, look, you know, Jesus said he's a light 
and yet he baptizes you, you know, to repentance. And I'm the one, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. They knew what that is. That's, the, that's, that's God in, in the wilderness talking to the 12 tribes. That's who he's talking about right there on the Day of Atonement. There's about 2 million people that's in Jerusalem right now for Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. They all come running out there because for the first time in 400 years, silence is being broke. The word's coming forth. The Bible says in Malachi that the words were precious in those days because, the, because God was not speaking. So they come running out there. Even the Pharisees and Sadducees, the serpents, are you the one that we're looking for? Who called you to repentance? Right? No, I'm not. I can't remove it, but I can only point you. The old covenant. I can only point you to the one that will. Amen. Behold, God's Lamb. Hallelujah. Listen to what he says. Whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Oh, there he is talking about the fire. Right there at the Jordan again. God built the first altar, put the first fire on it. Right? Here comes a fire from heaven with Elijah. Man, you start connecting the dots. Here it is. This is where Elijah came after contending with the 50 prophets. Remember, with the 50. If I be a man of God, let fire come down and consume you where you stand. When Elijah and Elisha was at Gilgal, right? They went from the place they was at to Gilgal. And, Eli and Elijah said, Elijah, Elisha, I'm going to, to Bethel. I want you to stay here. I'm going to tie this in. Uh, you have to see it. There's an altar in the Jordan, right? You're going to see this circle that he's going to make. Elijah and Elisha, they began out. They was in one place, when you read it close, and they go to Gilgal, which where is an altar. And, God, and, and Elijah tells Elisha, stay here, for I'm going to Bethel. And he goes to Bethel. Well, that was another place of an altar. It was the house of God. It's where Abraham parted the animals in half. And God made a covenant with him. And God walked between the pieces. Wow. And from there, they went, stay here. The 50 prophets were there. We're going to Jericho. Oh, Jericho. Amazing Jericho. Amazing Jericho, because Jericho was an altar too. What? Did, what? When Joshua crossed over, God made Jericho an altar, and He said, "Everything in there is mine." And they burnt it. Literally, it collapsed in the great sound. They walked around the altar. Remember, thirteen times. It all fell down and they all went up and made a big sacrifice on top of Jericho. Jericho, it, it literally means fragrance. It became a sweet Savior unto the Lord. Jericho and God said that whoever rebuilds that place would be cursed Ooh. so they went from Gilgal an altar to Bethel an altar to Jericho an altar to the altar in the Jordan altar 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 wow watch this those are very, very important. And he says, remember this. God put an altar of 12 stones in the Jordan River. But he also put an altar of 12 stones at Gilgal. So... What's up with the moving of the altar? Why the two altars? Wow. Let's see. Watch. And just hold on, Miss Barbara, because it's coming. And he says, he says, uh, and all the people were in expectation saying, Are you the Christ? And John answered and said, I baptize you with water. 
but one mighty and I come, whose uh, shoes I'm not worthy unto lose. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire, whose fan is in his hand to purge the floor. What floor? The threshing floor, the altar. Right? He's laying it out. Now, it says that after he says this, he says uh, there was a place of judgment. He says, but the chaff will be burned with unquenchable fire. And in many other things he began to say. Now, watch this. This altar that God... I know they... I know. But there's no way I can leave them out. I can't stop now. Watch this. So, this place that I just connected for you guys is of such significance. But God, just as He changed Yom Kippur and Passover, this altar represented Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Which one? The one in the Jordan. But, but there's another altar that was prepared for Him by God. This altar right here just represents where Adam was put out of the garden. You see, Adam had sinned someplace and God let him out to the east gate. The water gate opens. The water gate opens. The water gate opens. They go to the other side. God builds an altar of 12 stones, makes a sacrifice, right? Brings judgment upon them right there. The beast that became the serpent, right? And all the, the skins and all the stuff happens right there. So, this is where Adam and Eve exited. But it's not where they died. It's not where they ate from the tree. This is the place that they were brought to where judgment was set upon them. So now, I want to take you to the other altar of twelve stones. You mean there's another altar? I'm not talking about the one in Gilgal. That was set up as a memorial for the children of Israel to remember how God opened the water gate. This, these 12 stones shall be a memorial, a memorial unto your children. You tell them that just as I have opened the water gate for Joshua, so I opened the water gate at the Red Sea for my children Israel to come unto me. Wow. Making away the water gate. And just so you'll know, Jesus is the water gate. Because He's the only way. He is the door. <laughs> oh, he is the threshold. That's right. And that's why He was standing on the threshold in the Jordan as the door. Because you have to make straight your path to come in through that door. Now, I want to take you someplace. I want you to go to... Um, Go to uh, go to Luke chapter nineteen. Go to Luke nineteen. Man, Luke chapter nineteen. Now to bring you up to date of what's happening here. This is seven days before Jesus is crucified. This is seven days before Jesus is crucified. Watch how the story starts. 
I told you guys that Jesus was crucified on a fig tree. Can, can the two, can the olive tree, which is a representation of the tree of life, could he have been nailed on a fig tree? Can the two be one? Watch this. Seven days before, his path, before he's killed. Look what the story brings us to Jericho. Watch this. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Hold on a second. Because so you'll understand that God's altar, God's altar, Jericho, Jericho was a city. And God, through Jericho, that's why nothing could be touched in Jericho. It was all God's. And I ain't going to even break it even further down with Achan, because it goes even deeper. But Jericho was a representation of Jerusalem. How was that? Well, let's see. Jericho becomes the altar. God's altar. The twelve tribes of Israel traveled and circled it round about. Right? But I think I remember a story of a woman that was in there called Rahab the harlot. That's right. She's going to be saved. That's right. And her family, by a scarlet thread that hung out the windows and on the doors. But hold on a second. Jericho, it was Rahab the harlot who gave birth to Boaz, the kinsman's redeemer. It was Israel, Jerusalem, that gave birth. The harlot, God called her, that gave birth to Jesus, the kinsman's redeemer. So now Jericho is a type and shadow of Jerusalem. So now the altar. We're going to see how God created two altars. Two altars, but they both are one and the same. Hallelujah. What if I could show you, what if I can show you exactly what happened in the Garden of Eden and at the Jordan River takes place in Jerusalem? Would that be absolutely amazing? Amen. So Jesus begins his ministry at Jericho. Watch this. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was chief of the mo among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who was, uh, who he was. He wanted to see who Jesus was. So Zacchaeus, whose name means pure, climbs up into a fig tree. A sycamore tree, which is a fig tree. He wants to see Jesus. Can the two become one? We have Zacchaeus, who is pure, a picture of Christ, hanging in a fig tree. And if you look close, if you look through Zacchaeus' life and what his name means, you can see Jesus because Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus and the Lord is saying if we look into that fig tree now wait a minute now Jericho in Jericho is a fig tree Zacchaeus climbs up in it well the place that's known for fig trees is Jerusalem Wow. Watch. So now, Jesus comes riding in. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was chief among the publicans, and he was rich, and he sought to see Jesus, who he was. 
And he could not for the press because uh, he was of little stature. That was Jesus. Right. He wasn't regarded as anything. Mm -hmm. Right? And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree. My Bible's got it broke down right here, a fig tree. To see him, for he was to pass that way. You see, Jesus is now coming. They don't tell you, but he's coming from the Jordan. And from the Jordan, he goes to Jericho. Because now he's making straight the path, right? He comes to the place where Jericho was God's altar. And he has to pass through that altar. So when he's passing through the altar, he's giving us and letting us know where the altar is going to be. And this altar where, you know, where this altar is going to be, it's going to be where Adam literally grabbed the fruit off the tree and oh. ate it and he was right there and died. Wow. So you see, he becomes the lamb, but he's got to go to the very spot where Adam partook the fruit off of the tree. Oh, the fig tree. Watch this. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and he came down and he received him. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying, you know, that he was go going to be a guest uh, with a man that is a sinner. You know, that's Jesus, right? And he says, And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, you know, the half of my goods I give to the poor. He got it. He understood it. And I have taken anything that I've taken from any man by false accusation, and I have restored it unto him. And Jesus said unto him, This day salvation has come to this house, for as much as he also is a son of Abraham. Hold on a second. Hallelujah. <laughs> He just identified an altar there. Okay. The sons of Abraham were identified by 12 stones. And that was an altar. But this is seven days as he's riding it before, you know, this is weak. Right? And he says, um, and they understood none of these things. And, and this was saying, uh, was hid from them. Neither they knew the things which were spoken. Now, now I want to go to 19... And watch this. All the same chapter. All the same chapter. In 19. This is called the triumphal entry. It's called the triumphal entry. You're going to love this one, brother. Brother. The revelation that you're speaking from the saying right now. Watch this. Watch this. And when he had thus spoken, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass, when he was come nigh Bethphage, that's the house of unripe figs, and Bethany, the house of sorrow, at a mount called Olives, he sent two disciples. So now, watch. I'm in 19 verse 28. Watch this. You said 19. I'm sorry. 19:28. And when he was thus spoken, um, he went up into Jerusalem, I, and he told them. Now, he tells his disciples, um, right here, he says, um, um, Go ye into the village. That's on the other side. He's on right at the foot of the Mount of Olives. There is Mount Moriah. There's a valley that separates him called the Valley of Jehoshaphat the valley that water had ran through one time. A big river separated the two mountains. They write, you just walk right to the next one, right? He's right there and he says, Go ye into the village over against you, in which at your entering, at your entering into the gate of coming into Jerusalem, you shall find a colt tied, whereupon yet never a man sat, 
loose him and bring him to me. You know why? This colt is called the beast. You see, Lucifer came in. Now the serpent, which is the word Nehas, which is the Tenenin, which is the beast. It says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field in which Lucifer came in on through the gate. Lucifer entered into a beast. So guess what? Jesus, he comes riding in on a beast. A beast of burden. A beast that spoke as a man to the prophet Baal to do what? To curse Israel. That's right. He says that never a man sat on. Why? Because never a man ever entered or sat upon a beast that Satan had rode in on. It, had, it couldn't be. It's, he is bringing us back to the garden. Let's see. Let's see. Watch. This is where the curse is going to be removed. He says, And if any man shall say unto you, and if any man asks you, why do you lose him? This, what happened to the beast that Satan used? The Nehas, the Teninin, this dragon that lost its legs and was laid down to eat the dust of the earth. God is going to loose him and restore even him back to the way he was before. You heard me? How do I know that? Because that beast of burden that was tied to the water gate door. Oh, I didn't tell you that. Oh, let me just tell you. So, the Jordan was called the water gate. The east gate. Jesus is now right outside on this side of the valley where the waters, the valley of Jehoshaphat, God, Jehoshaphat will judge. The valley of judgment where waters went through at one time. He's on this side right at the base of the Mount of the Olives looking right there into the water gate which goes into the city of David. It's called the water gate. He says... You see that beast over there tied up? Go loose him. That beast that spoke as a man, because I'm about to set him free. I think he, you know, as Satan, you know, entered into the serpent. Isn't it something now God enters into you and me? Yes. So, let's see. Let's see if this is if this is it. Watch. And if any man says unto you, why do you loose him? Thus you shall say unto him, because the Lord hath need of him. And they that were sent there found even as he had said unto him. And as they were loosened the colt, now they're on the Mount of Olives, the, I mean Mount Moriah, which is a law. Hey, why are you loosing him? The law ain't never going to let you go. Well, then you tell him. Jesus, Yeshua, said for me to come over here and set him free. Oh. That, that word says, the Lord hath need of him? No. Lord is Baal. Lord, King James replaced how many times? Took out Yahweh. Took out Yahshua. 
and put Lord in. Lord don't save you or set you free. Amen. Yeshua said for me to come over here. The God of salvation told me to turn him loose and set him free. <laughs> it's a big difference. It is. Because, you see, they knew Yeshua and the power that he walked in. There's like two million people here. Yeah. This is the feast of, you know, here it is, it's, you know, now it went from, you know, it's the feast of Passover, there's about two million people here, you know, so this ain't no, you know, they know who he is, they all, it's three and a half years of ministry. That's right. Oh, oh, Yeshua said it? The one who raised the, you know, the sick and walked on water and did this and did that? No. Man, get out the way, because something's about to happen. Something is about to happen. <laughs> And they brought him to Jesus. I like that. They brought him to Jesus. And they cast their skins on top of him. Oh, no. <laughs> the garments. It's literally skins. So they cast skins upon him. Watch this and spread their skins in the way. Now, I, I want to I take you to that very spot, but I want you to go now to Matthew. Go to Matthew. M Matthew chapter 20. Watch this. Because in Matthew, Matthew says something else. Matthew 20. And um, it's... Uh, Um, he says, um, no, you yeah. it says that um, in Matthew 20, verse 8, and a great multitude uh -oh. spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches from trees and strawed them, meaning threw them in a road. Now, that's another connection right there. Because what's happening is the Bible says that when the Messiah comes, He's going to make the pathway smooth. This is the fulfillment of prophecy that's coming forth. You understand? The pathways are being made smooth. That's what's happening. This is Isaiah 40 in the fulfillment of who he is and what he's about to do. Now, let me... i got to go another place. And I want to go to... Um, let me go to Mark 11 real quick. You could stay there. Because I want to show you Mark 11. Man, this is like amazing. Mark 11... It says, um, uh, and loose the colt in verse 9, and, um, and they spread their garments, and they cut down branches off the trees and threw them in a way. Okay, it's John who says it in John 12. John 12, that's who says it, the word I'm looking for. Man, this, whew. John 12, 12 through 15. It says, uh, oh, here it is, John 12, the triumphal entry. On the next day, much people that had were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him. Oh, palm. The branches were palm. So the altar... Jericho, do, do you know what Jericho? Its name means fragrance. Jericho is known for its palm trees. Jericho was filled with palms. That's why they come waving the palms. Hey, watch this, hey baby. Baby, 
That's on what? Not on the feast of. That's the feast of tabernacles. Right. Right. The triumphal entry. The triumphal yeah. entry. Wow. That's right. Now watch this. Watch this. They come with palm fronds. Yeah. They're laying their coats, their skins down. This is identifying the Jordan. Right. The water gate. They're going through the water gate. The place of a skin. The place of skins. The place of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is riding in to the east gate. The east gate. There's three gates on the east side of Jerusalem. This is the water gate. Woo! Woo! Blessed is he who, who comes in the name of the Lord who's making paths straight and smooth they're laying the skins out yeah. Hallelujah. removing the curse but wait go back to Luke Luke what was it in Luke what Luke 19 19 where we at give it to me hurry up Luke 19 verse 20 blessed is he verse uh it says, verse, uh, verse 35, And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt, and sat him thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in a way, making the path smooth. And when he was come nigh, even at the descent of the Mount of Olives, because you see, when you descend out of the Mount of Olives, right there at the city of David, at the water gate, it goes right back up. Exactly. I mean, it's nothing. I was there. It's right there. He says, <clears throat> And as he come nigh, even at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice. With a loud voice. And all, uh, because of all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed, be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And the Pharisees from among the multitude said, that's the serpents. <laughs> oh, so we have the serpents there now. Right? They're at the gate. The water gate. Well, what was the water gate? Well, that was the entrance into the city of David. That was where they did all the baptisms at. Every one of them. Because that's where the temple was. Right? Watch this. I'm going to connect it for you. And he said, A master, rebuke them! Oh, and then he says something that is so absolutely amazing. Can we have an altar of 12 stones in the water gate? Mm -hmm. Can we have an altar of 12 stones there? Watch what he says. He says, And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke your disciples, thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you, that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. <laughs> what stones? I am so glad you asked me that question. I am so glad. Because the stones represented the children of Israel. The children of Israel are crying out. The stones are crying out. The twelve tribes. <laughs> 